I talk about it's a blow up type equation. I'll be interested in non compactness issues. So let's start with the classical Yamaha problem. You are already familiar. Consider a closed Riemannian manifold, that means compact without boundary. And the question proposed by Yamab is there a, a Riemannian metric in the same conformal class of G with high constant scalar curvature? The answer will, will be yes, due to four papers. Yamabe himself, Trudiger, Oban, and Shen, 24 years later. This motivated, motivated the case of manifolds with boundary. You consider a compact manifold with boundary. And the question was proposed by Escobar. Is there a conformal scalar flat metric which has the boundary as a constant mean curvature hypersurface? Would it be like this? Have your manifold. Compact. We're looking for a matrix. It has zero scalar curvature in the interior and on the boundary. The mean curvature constant. Right? This is the same conformal class. This is the metric we look for. They correspond to critical points of this functional. This functional will be total scalar curvature plus the total mean curvature divided by its area with some exponent here. That means this exponent chosen in order to make this invariant and multiply by a positive constant. You multiply the metric by a positive constant, and this is invariant, right? So Escobar defined the conformal invariant. This is the infimum in the conformal class, very similar to the case of manifolds without boundary. So it's a conformal invariant, and I'm not putting here, but it depends on the conformal class. And this first, this is not bounded from below. This is different from the case of manifolds without boundary. So if you have this inequality here, it, the infimum is not minus infinite. And if you have this strict inequality, and here is the ball, right? The unit ball will be our model case. So we are comparing with this. It's very similar to a bond result, but we needed this hypothesis, this one here. If, if you have the strict inequality, of course you have here minus or uh, less than or equal, where red has. If there is a strict inequality, we have solution. This inequality is proved actually uh, in every case, in any case, by Scobar himself, then other kids proved by Marcus, then and myself. And this last one is a preprint available in archive from SoftChain. He proved the remaining case reducing to a positive mass theorem for the case of manifolds with, with boundary. So basically, the Scobar approach is done. It's completed here. But we still have this. This is possible to happen, to, to be equal. So uh, there's still some remaining cases. But we are going to be interested in the compactness of the whole set of solutions to the Amab equation, the so Escobar equation. This was proposed in a classical Yamab problem by Rick Shane in 1988. And he proved the case of manifold, when the manifold is conformal equivalent to 
the sphere, locally conforming equivalent sphere, so locally conforming flat case, <coughs> he proved. He also proposed a program, and many, uh, there were many works in this. <coughs> and the last, this last three papers completed the program, solved the general case. I'll talk about them in just a few moments. But the case for manifolds with boundary, this is still open. The problem is still open. We have some part of results, but it's still open. So let's go back now to the case of manifolds without boundary. Consider a closed remaining manifold, which is not conformally equivalent to the sphere. And it has positive amount of quotient. We fix a conformal class. And the question is, is this set compact? The set of metrics that has constant scalar curvature. Of course, here is a fixed constant. Otherwise, you could just multiply the metric by a positive constant if the set wouldn't be compact. This hypothesis is necessary because of the conformal group of different morphisms of the sphere. This is non compact. And this set is non-compact in the sphere. So, and yeah, my quotient positive, you need this. You don't need this, actually. But this set would be trivial if this is not non-positive. OK? So the fa first answer, a general answer, of course, uh, not the f first answer, but uh, a general result, and it was surprising at the, at the time. Compactness does not hold for does not hold for dimensions not less than 52. And then, compactness holds up to dimension 24 by Curie, Mars, and Shane. The first one by Simon Breno. Yeah, we need they use it. The positive mass here. Uh, up to dimension 24, so they needed this kind of theory. And this is basically I'm not giving the details, of course, but the equation involved here, the Yamada equation, here is the conformal Laplacian. This is positive because this is related to a map quotient. So what you look for is a positive constant that depends on the metric such that you have this uniform bound, uniform estimate. So for 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 all you positive as above. Uh, solutions to the Yamab equation, right? And Rick Shane also proposed a program based on a Pohazayev type identity. In their paper, their paper, they found a quadratic form related to this positive identity, right? Quadratic in the coefficients of the metric. So right here, quadratic form. That, that's positive definite in dimensions up to 24. And it has negative again values in dimensions greater than 24. So that's the reason they prove it for these dimensions, for those dimensions. And then, Brenda and Marx together, they prove it, they found counterexamples in dimensions between 25 and 51. In the case of manifolds with boundary, Consider manifold compact. Suppose M is not conformal equivalent to the ball, to the model case. 
and positive and amount quotient. And the quest, the question consider the set of scalar flat conformal scalar flat matrix which has the boundary as a constant mean curvature hypersurface. Is it the set compact? But here again a fixed set constant, right? Just one constant you can fix any positive constant you, you want, positive because this is related to to the Amago quotient. And if this is non positive, this set would be trivial. Okay, if this is equal to zero, the set, if this, uh, you have just one solution unless you multiply by a positive constant. If it's negative, it's in fact, uh, uh, uni there is a unique solution. So the first answer, in the case of manifolds which are locally conforming flat, conforming flat with umbilical boundary, it is was proved by Veronica Feli and Mohamed Oud Amedou. This case uh, you see here, they look like the sphere. It's locally conform equivalent to the sphere, but not globally. So it's similar to the to Rick Chen's result. In dimension three, they don't need the hypothesis of M being locally conform and flat because the white tensor already vanishes. Third result would be a generic. Uh, if M satisfies a generic condition, the result is is true. Generic conditions mean you consider a whole set of metrics, and M satisfies a generic condition if it is a condition that satisfies in an open and dense subset of the whole set of metrics. So if you just perturbate the metric, you are you satisfy the the metric satisfies. The generic condition. Right, so almost every manifold is compact. Uh, the, the, this set is compact for almost every manifold, but it's not a general result, it's a generic result. This is the boundary trace, uh, the boundary trace free second fundamental form is non zero ever, everywhere. That means the boundary is non umbilic uh, everywhere. Uh, a natural conjecture would be there is a critical dimension such that compactness does not hold or hold in dimensions less than the critical one and does not hold in dimensions greater than the critical one. So this natural to ask, to ask if this happens in the, in the case of manifolds without boundaries, it's natural to ask if the, the same happens in the, in the case of manifolds with boundary. So, our result would be consider n greater than or equal to 25. This would be a par partial result or a result for this. And there is a remaining metric on the unit ball in a sequence of pos positive solutions to the Yamab equation. I would say Escobar equation because it's the, the Yamab type equation on the plan. This is the equation that relates conform. Here, we have the Yamab equation on the tier related conformal matrix of conformal matrix, sorry, uh, scalar, scalar curvatures of conformal matrix. Right? And here, mean curvatures of conformal matrix. And let me say this, I forgot to say. Here, the, what, what the metric will be look like, will look like. Metric will look like this. Right? This is the equation that relates both metrics, the scalar curvatures of both metrics. You already know this. And here you have the same. So V that relates both metrics. Okay. Here represents the mean curvature of the metric G chilled. <coughs> so K is a positive constant because we are interested in the case of a positive Yamab quotient. And it points inwards. And G is not conformally flat. That means this the example is not conformal 
conformally equivalent to the ball. Because it's conformally flat in particular, it's not conformally equivalent to the ball. So in fact, in fact we are going to find the counter examples for compactness. Boundary is umbilic. And here, you remember the functional applied to the metric, G2. It's less than the infimum. It's the conforming variant of the ball. So the, we call this the, the functional, we could, we could call it the energy. The energy is bounded from, from above. And the supremo goes to infinite. That's, that's important here. We are blowing up, right? And how do you construct this, this kind of examples? Right? So we are going to follow the program proposed by, proposed, adopted by Brando and the Brando and Marx in the case of manifolds without boundary. The program consists in choosing appropriate finite dimensional space, find approximate solutions, actually kind of orthogonal to this finite dimensional space, I'll give details later, and solve finite dimensional problem. So I'll give you a brief idea on the proof. So consider this equation. This is, remember, we have this equation here. This is the equation that relates this is the equation we're interested, right? Here represents the 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 mean curvature of the metric written like, like this. This actually is n minus two divided by two, and here is the mean curvature of this metric, right? This is constant. Uh, we want to be constant. So we're trying to look at the solutions. And here I consider the, the metric of the half, half space, it's the Euclidean metric. And th this equation is saying that the mean curvature is equal to 2. Because of here, right? It's equal to 2. There is an n parameter family of solutions. The parameters are psi along the boundary, dimension n minus 1, and epsilon, epsilon, right? And those solutions, they are the own solutions of this equation. This is the same as this equation, but with the Euclidean metric. And they look like this. You consider here. R n plus the, the half space. Here's the half space I, I represented with just one dimension. And consider psi zero a point, right? That's actually in the boundary. And the solutions they look like this. When epsilon goes, goes to zero, it goes to infinite. The solutions are concentrated in the, the point psi. This is going to be our model case in order to construct solutions. We want to construct, uh, construct a family of solutions, remember? We went to, we're looking for V, solution to this problem. So we start with solution to this problem, the Euclidean case. And the half, spa, the, half, the half space is conformed equivalent to the unit ball using U to relate the metric, right? So the ball here, 
has constant uh, main curvature equals to two. So actually, it's not the unit ball. It's the, the ball of radius one and a half. One half. So since we are looking for metrics on the ball, that's the right kind of function to start the metric. Then consider, uh, we're going to, find to consider metrics like this. G equals to exponential of matrix, exponential of H. H is a, is a two tensor seen as a matrix here. The matrix is near the Euclidean one and is actually equal to the Euclidean one uh, outside um, a half ball of radius one. Because when uh, h is equal to zero, this is the Euclidean metric, right? So let's go back a little bit to here. <coughs> I'll tell what's the finite dimension of space. Let's consider this family of, sol of fun functions. Consider this pair, like, like here. Pair of uh, the n family of solutions and parameter family, and there is this one parameter here. You go go from n from one to n. You consider this set. I'm not going to tell the expression for this metric, but I just tell you that there are solutions to the linearized equation when you linearize this equation around this point. So take the de derivative at this point, right? So it's a linear equation, and those represent the kernel of this of this uh, of the linearized equation. So they're related to the kernel. They're not exactly because you have some fact factors multiplied by here. They are in the kernel, except when you need to multiply by by u. So, have this space. You consider the orthogonal one. That are functions on the half space, right? The function on the half space, right? So the be mark the chart orthogonal to the kernel in some sense it's not exactly this space because you need some decay properties right so I'm not telling the truth here the sol solutions the these functions they actually they are some decay properties. We need this. So we consider metrics that they are perturbation of the Euclidean metric. And there is a, I would say that there is a unique V for each pair that's written as U plus this term here. The, this term is in the orthogonal space. It's here. So there is a un unique V satisfying so these properties and the solutions to this equation. This is the Yama Yamab equation. A weak formulation, but we are cons considering just that functions on the orthogonal space, right? So it's not actually a solution. It's uh, an approximate solution in this sense. We are considering just that, that functions here. And why, why W is in the orthogonal space? This is, in order to find these solutions, we had to invert the linearized operator. At some point, we had to invert the linearized operator. So we need to be orthogonal to the kernel, right? To be more precise, uh, uh, to give a little more details, you put this right here and try to solve the equation. And you put the, the terms 
that are linear in W on one hand, on left hand side, and there are their terms on the right hand side. You have to solve something like this. And you, if you can invert the operator, you can use a fixed point theorem to find the solution. And you, you use the fact that the metric is near the Euclidean one. Because actually, it's a linearized operator uh, of the Euclidean, uh, of the Euclidean uh, Yamaga equation. So, but you are near the, the Euclidean case. So define this functional using B, right? This is the functional that's the analogous one uh, that, that Brandon Marx used. We have this one that's the analogous one for the case of, for our case. And now, there's a proposition, I'm not giving the proof. If this pair of points, the, okay, this pair, this pair, remember, this is, uh, uh, this is R n minus one, and this is a real positive number. It's a critical point of f, modify the f. Then v is a positive solution of the equation we are interested. So basically, we find solution that are approximate solution. In the sense, there are solutions when they are restricted to, to orthogonal space. You have a family of solutions. But if you find a critical point along this space, there will be, it will be the actual solution. It will be a weak solution on this sense, but we have regularity due to share here. You have read these results. So they become an actual solution. So how to find this, this critical point? That's what we're going to to talk a little bit. Remember, the matrix will be like this exponential of H. H is a matrix. It's in fact, it's in fact, it's a two tensor. We're seeing this as a matrix, and then V was written like this: U plus W. The problem was to find W, but to find found. If you want to approximate V, you take this Z. Where right, Z is first order in eight. Why? Because if you expand this, you have the Euclidean metric plus eight plus one half eight plus order three. We're taking the first order approximation for for V, right? So, but we want approximation for modified f. So what we do? We put this. Remember, this goes inside here. But we put this inside here. We collect the terms. We collect the terms that are of order two, and we end up with an approximation for a modified f. This approximation are the terms of order two. Because if terms of, for, of order one and zero, here they cancel out. The order three, you consider as error. So you just consider terms of order two. To be more precise, The metric will look like this, uh, the explanation of this. So 
here is a vial tensor type. It's a vial tensor type that this is not. These are constants. Here are, are the coordinates. So these are constants, but it has the symmetry of the vial tensor. This f is a polynomial. And, but you see, okay, it's a polynomial. You have to choose this coefficient. So have the freedom to choose. And a, a, sorry, i and g they vary from one to n minus one. So this does not depend on the x and coordinate, the last coordinate. It depends only on the boundary coordinates, right? In the Brando and Marx, they use it a very similar one that inspired me to use this. It is very similar, but in my case, I put this. They are, they are. They just depend on the boundary coordinates. I tried some different things, but this one, the most simple one, that the one that worked. And Z, the expressions here, order one, you solve a linearized equation, so you have to be in the orthogonal space, like this. Z is in the ortho orthogonal space. It's an approximation for W. You don't worry about the expression. And the expression for F would be like this. Or the two here, or the one, or the two in x, sorry, or the two in eight. So the metric, I just this, I'll just say that. Why you define an approximation for modified F? Because we're looking for critical points of the approximation. Because you don't have an expression for this, a precise expression. Because you don't have a precise expression for V, this one. But for this, we can have. First, because Z, that we don't have ex ex expression. Is zero when you consider uh, psi is equals to zero, right? Because of the symmetries, is equals to zero, and if the derivative f, the direction of psi, the point zero one, then you are going to change the scale, is equals to zero by symmetry, and now we are interested. We're going to derivate the direction of epsilon. And here is where the positive quadratic form is related. First, this is related to, is essentially the quadratic form. This is essentially the Poisson quadratic form. Remember, in the case of Brando and Marx and, uh, and Curie and Shane, or the paper of Curie, Marx and Shane, they showed this has negative eigenvalues. Right? In my case, the same happens if you consider this matrix, this type of matrix. Of course, I have to choose the coefficients here. So choosing appropriate, you can find a negative eigenvalue. So this is negative for appropriate, appropriate choices of A0, the coefficients. So AD. So this is quadratic in A0 to AD, and choose appropriate ones, and this is negative, right? But if you take A0 large enough, this is positive. 
This is because the Pohanzai quadratic form, in my case, like the, the in the case of manifolds without bounder, this is, uh, this quadratic form is positive definite when you consider homogeneous polynomials. So this is the first the first or zero order coefficient. So if you take this large, this will be much bigger than those one. So you actually are doing is we fix this, those, and you will let A zero vary. And here would be the graph of this. I'm trying to find this equals to zero. You take a zero large, and eh? when they are here, you have a negative and positive, so you can find a critical point. And actually, you can prove that this critical point is actually a minimum, a local minimum. And you, you, then you, you find a critical point near this one because you, have, you need a critical point of this. So near to zero, one. Actually, when you change the scale, it's not one here. So using the approximation, you can find a critical point here. And then you find solution C. To define a metric, consider a metric. And what I use is, I just draw some picture before, before I show the expression, because consider a sequence of points going to zero. It's too big. The centers of this, those disks are going to zero. Here, consider x n. This is the first coordinate. So there are other coordinates. Right? You are going to work in it. Half ball. But we remember xn is greater than or equal to zero. So we do the same construction here, and then here, and then here, change the scale. Anyway, here. Then define the metric using a cutoff function. And don't worry about the expression. You just need to know that you are translating. Remember the metric you consider f times something like this. Now we change it, change the scale, right? Using this, and we are translating. So that's what we are doing. We have it here translating. Translate and change the scale. For each one, we're doing both. When you, here, actually, uh, G is equal to, to 8, just a, a fixed side half ball, right? And everything you did, you did in this fixed side half ball, right? And here, what you do is consider, try to find a solution here. We find a solution. Let's say Vn. That's a solution on, on the half plane, but they are concentrated in the, this point, like they were concentrated here. It was concentrated here. But if you, u0, concentrated here. And then do the same construction, but to change the scale. And do here, the same thing. Right, the metric is fixed, but finding V <coughs> concentrated here, the, another solution that concentrates here. And because of the change of scale, the supremo and 
of Vn go to infinite. Here consider, let's say, Gn, the disk. Bring on the bounder, goes to infinite. That's the, the solution. And this is well defined. You take in n zero large, supports so compact. You have the same solution. So thank you. Thank you. So any question or comment?